Hey, Sebastian. Hello. <laughs> it's the end of a long business day, long day at work, and we're recording this episode. Get another episode, number 1,257? Or 60. Or oh, 60, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I'm confused on the number. Yep. Episode number 60, I believe it is. Or... 61 or 59 who knows one of these and uh yeah it's our favorite hobby even if we're both dead jet lagged i will have a question for you though since we're in person and face to face have you brushed your teeth yeah good have you uh it was a while this morning yes the reason i asked this and again you'll applaud the transition is because sometimes political parties make it a, a requirement if they get elected that all citizens would be obliged to brush their teeth. It's not even a joke. Vermin Supreme. You mentioned that to me. Vermin Supreme is... You want to talk more about it because you, you, you shared the, the information with me, this American political party. Yeah, Vermin Supreme is a accomplished presidential candidate. He's running for president for years now in the U.S. It's not a joke, by the way, uh, to our listeners. I had never heard of Vermin Supreme, but this is actually a real thing. Yep. Uh, so this is not a joke. He also promised, by the way, if he got elected, to have uh, he promised a free pony to every American. He wants to transform the the whole economy of the United States into a pony driven economy. Which is a brilliant idea. Who, who, what's not to love about ponies? By the way, if you think of those big animals, he basically says the first step is to develop the technology required to shrink them so you <laughs> can carry them around. I'm disappointed that he's not advocating for unicorns. Because I, I hear a lot about these unicorns in the startup world. I think a unicorn-driven world would be more you know, enticing. Pretty cool. I I I start I would I would I would start with pony driven economy any time, but a unicorn driven economy would pretty cool would be pretty cool as well. And we've come full circle because we're still in Silicon Valley recording this. Yeah, and the unicorn is the term for startups, which are uh, which valuation is estimated at more than a billion dollars. Do you see this wonderful transition I always make from being face to face to brushing your teeth to vermin supreme to unicorns yeah. to Silicon Valley to where we are today right now? Yeah, that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. That's amazing. Um, the the big question our listeners now. No, you made a mistake. Not, a, not amazing. It's awesome. Hey, you're again laser focused on on the right words. Of course, absolutely. I adapt to the context I'm in. Everything is awesome here. Everything is oh, awesome. God, thank you. <laughs> I didn't have to come. How many people have done that to me? And I have not even seen the film. Everything is awesome. Anyway. Um, I do think our listeners are by now pretty confused what we are actually about to debate over. So, Master of Transition, please tell us, what is the motion today? The motion is, it is critical for democracies to have satire political parties and clown politicians. Because they are not apparently not only a phenomenon in the States, right? There are... There are satire political parties and clown politicians all over the world. The other interesting example, by the way, is in the UK, where we have Lord Buckethead, who looks like uh, a very strange version of Darth Vader with a bucket on his head. Um, did you know, I did my little research, because you mentioned that to me, I, had not, I did not know, but actually the person uh, impersonating uh, Lord Buckethead is not the same over time. He first presented himself against Margaret Thatcher in 1987, if I'm not mistaken, and John Major. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the latest was against um, uh, Theresa May in the UK. And in this case, it was not the same person, actually. Well, do you have any demands Lord Buckethead has, uh, he's running with? I don't remember. I don't think I, I looked into the details. But anyway, across history in the past at least 30 years, there have been comedians... Uh, clowns, uh, real politicians, or would be, uh, uh, or claiming to be real politicians, um, to have try to gain power through elections. Uh, there's another party in Germany you mentioned, and I looked this one up also, Die Partei, the party. So anyway, so I will be for the motion, the fact that we need to have these 
uh, clowns uh, to for, demo- for, for democracies to be thriving and exciting and interesting. It's critical for them. Uh, and you'll be against. And again, the decision is only by the flip of a coin. I did not decide it's just a coin. It's just randomness. All right, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. CEOs of TV channels should be dispossessed of human dignity. That's the pledge, that's the promise that the party, the Partei in Germany, has made if they get elected. And it's funny. Obviously, nobody believes that they would actually do this. But a little bit of humor in everything is necessary. Otherwise, life, honestly, would be too dull. And I don't smile. I don't laugh enough. People who know me, uh, you listeners, maybe some of you know me, you know I don't smile enough. So if these things make me smile and laugh, we should really have them. That's a very strong argument I'm making here. Heads of states end up anyway, mostly being entertainers. Aha, what a perfect transition. Our next debate will be about that. The heads of state are like masters of ceremony of a big show we call democracy. Examples abound, and I'm not going to go into the debate that we'll debate next week. Some of these parties don't necessarily aspire to getting to power. Instead, they try to point out to a number of messages they try to pass along, showing the absurdity of some political slogans by other parties. And if they do reach power, despite all odds, it can also be a signal that something is broken not in the democratic system itself, but in the traditional political parties that compete within these democracies. It can act as a wake-up call. A well-functioning democracy, by the way, needs to represent all the ways the people uh, want to express themselves. Democracies, after all, is the power to the people. And if someone wants to have fun and use humor and satire, well, it's a way of expressing it. We should also give a way for these parties and people to express themselves in the realm of elections and democracy. And that includes extremist, fascist, communist messages, if that's how they feel. I'd much rather have a democracy when everyone's voice is out in the open rather than an underground democracy and we just reserve that democracy for some politically correct parties. Let there be light. Someone famous once said that. I think it's Beethoven, blind on his deathbed. You could argue that humor is not an ism, it's not a dogma, that it's not an ideology like fascism or socialism or liberalism. But who are we to decide how some may wish to express themselves? And I have more arguments, I'm out of time. But yes, it is absolutely critical for democracies, for systems, uh, political systems that include the people, to have all kinds of people represented. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear his argument. I do think that politics at its core is serious business. Sorry, it might be less fun, might be unpopular, but it is serious business. Because after all, decisions can impact and kill people, sometimes millions of them. Using satire to make fun of it may be entertaining, but it also damages the standing of politicians, ridicules the political process, and in the end damages what... or lowers what people can accomplish in that business. Number one. Uh, Sometimes satire is elected into office, you mentioned as much, and then it becomes an ongoing joke, and that's even worse, because where people want to have a serious argument, an exchange uh, of arguments like we have, uh, all of a sudden you have a joker in between who has fun um, disrupting this or makes fun of the process. This is harming the entire process as well. Satirical politicians also, on top of this, bind resources. They are getting elected into office. That happens um, on on multiple levels in multiple democracies. And when they when they are, then usually they be, they are granted money to to uh, race for uh, run for election. They are granted seats that could be taken by people that are actually there to do real work. Uh, they are a binding decision-making processes. Sometimes when there is uh, a swing vote, they might just as well be the swing vote. And I'd much rather have somebody arguing about the subject area and trying to be skillful and knowledgeable than a joker who just wants to make fun about the process. So, no. Clowns shouldn't decide the faith of millions. 
Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. It is so much a serious business that for the past 30, 40 years, there has been no single grand vision exposed by any politician. The grand visions of the 20th century, like communism or liberalism, were, are in the past. Nowadays, politicians have very little wiggle room. The state budget, when it comes to allocating it, goes mostly to paying teachers, the police, running infrastructure. They actually have a very little margin for deciding what they want to do with it. So maybe it is serious, but I haven't seen anyone seriously coming with a vision, a grand vision for their country uh, over the past 30 years. Uh, and saying it can kill people, I think it's a very emotional argument. Um, and I don't think this is most of the case uh, what is happening. In fact, when you say when they do happen to come to power, it can be a disaster. I haven't seen any examples. I'd, be, I'd love to hear examples uh, from you on this aspect. And you mentioned what if they get money to run for elections? It's a waste of resources. Well, actually, let's talk about this. Let's talk about uh, money at elections. I looked into Die Partei, again, the German party, uh, which is uh, trying to mock the other traditional parties. One of the things they have done was because the German electoral law was allowing to give funding to parties depending on how many votes they were getting, the traditional thing, but also on how much revenue they were making by uh, selling merchandise. I did not know this. Do you know this? And the thing is, what the extreme right party did, they exploited that loophole, the AFD uh, party, and they were selling gold bars to the actual value of the gold bar to its members, thereby increasing the revenue of its merchandise, thereby increasing the money they were getting for elections. So what they did by showing this loophole, the, the party, the uh, de partai, well, to show that it was wrong to do this, so it allowed to change the law by doing by selling the merchandise, and now the law is about the profit you're making on the merchandise, not the revenue uh, you're raising. So sometimes these satirical parties can actually raise issues, and I think that's the point. It's, they're not trying to make only a joke. I think in most cases, it's pointing the finger to the problems that exist in democracies. Fair enough. Sometimes the problems they point to are maybe minor. They could be small. They could be saying like, you know what, your slogans are silly. Another example from then is to say uh, for, for Die Partei was education starts with E. That was one of their slogans. I find it pretty funny, but it was mocking the slogans of other parties, which are honestly sometimes ridiculous. So overall, yes, it is a serious business, but honestly, none of the politicians even in place today have exposed anything interesting, inspiring, visionary. So might as well have a broad range and even some fun and satire into this because it's not just about having a good laugh it's actually pointing out to problems so overall yes i think it is critical for these democracies especially today to have these clown uh, 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 politicians and comedians and satire parties to be able to point to these problems and have a little bit of a laugh as well between pony ponies brushing your teeth and not selling gold bars so that the extreme right party the fascist party can actually possibly come to come to power because of flaws and loopholes and the, the electoral law in Germany. Now, it's Dirk's turn. I can give you an example from the same party. Uh, Die Partei actually managed to get into the European Parliament. So there is somebody sitting in there, taking up a seat, voting in votes, um, getting, getting paid for attending meetings and such who has no intention to really contribute to that process, but making a joke out of it. Do they have a lucky punch every once in a while? Do they manage to, to point out a flaw in the system? Sure they are. No question that sometimes something good comes out of, out of it. But in general, many of these clown parties, Lord Buckethead or uh, uh, Vermin Supreme, yeah, they are also in there just for the joke. And so they, I maintain, they keep binding resources that could be used otherwise. And a lack of a grand vision is not enough reason to have a clown elected. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's uh, even politicians are sometimes pretty, pretty funny um, without intention. I hope most of the time, um, but that's still not the same as making fun of the electorate, making fun of people trying to establish themselves or work on advancing a nation maybe there is a vision missing but it's surely not coming from clowns exposing that lack of a vision if anything then electing satire parties or clown politicians 
damages that vision even further because it makes a joke out of our democratic systems to all the other systems. I mean, there's a reason why we are seen by some despots or colored as being uh, ridiculous and not capable of really tackling the big problems and whatnot. They only have to point to these examples to, the, to tell uh, basically a story about how flawed and not serious our systems are. And this is also a, a risk. We basically make a joke out of democracy. And democracy is being pushed back these days already. Um, electing jokers into parliaments is not helping that cause either. In the end, it's basically producing friction. It's binding people. It's, it's clouding arguments. We are very fast in pointing to politicians. Uh, for a lack of a vision and for a lack of execution. But it's us, it's on us to really make change happen and democracy happen. And if we use our vote to, to elect a joke into parliament, then we're definitely also not helping democracy and also not advancing the motion. And we are doing nothing for a grand vision. We just, we just do it for a laugh. No, it's absolutely something I'm against. Uh, political parties and clown politicians should stay out of the business. They can make their jokes outside it. They don't have to run for election. They can have plenty of fun not binding these, these resources. Final statements. Sebastian, let's hear it. Self-declared clown politicians, and I, and I say self-declared because unfortunately a lot of the politicians we see don't consider themselves clowns, but they are clowns, so I'm talking about only the ones who consider themselves as clowns, are only a very fringe movement. They're not significant. It's so small, such a tiny amount of resources that I think we can spare it. Yes, it may look like a waste, but it's so small that I think it's worth even just for the laugh, if it were only for the laugh. The thing is, uh, these clowns are allowed to point to wider problems. They're not here to replace visions. That's not what I said. I'm not saying they're, uh, they're replacing a, a lack of vision. I'm saying they're pointing out to the problems of our democracies. In fact, our systems already, our democracies are already anyway big shows. And it would be a contradiction for democracy to not allow every type of politician, including the clowns, to actually express themselves. It's the definition itself of democracy to allow everyone to have a voice. And if they get a seat, so be it. That's democracy, power to the people. Otherwise, we don't call it democracy. I will conclude that I, I will invite all our listeners to vote for, uh, for the motion. It is critical for democracies to have clan politicians. And if you do that, you will get a free Pixel 3 phone that Dirk will finance or, an, or the latest iPhone that Dirk will also finance. So please vote with me in favor of the motion. That was you trying to be funny, right? <laughs> it was not a joke. <laughs> I'm trying to, try to get votes. You buy votes. <laughs> I can't promise it for pony. I'm like, how can I ship it everywhere? Dirk. I don't need clowns or satire to point out problems in our system. I do think there are plenty of problems we know we need to fix with or without a joke or pointing to them. I agree with you. We are a free society and everybody should be allowed to be voted in, even if it's satire or a clown. Uh, sure, yes, I agree. The motion was not, should we ban them? The motion was, is it critical for democracies? We don't need them to point out flaws. We know plenty of flaws to fix. And yeah, maybe they managed to get one problem fixed. There are others waiting for fixing and we don't need clowns to find problems. I do think they they damage the standing of democracies. They bind however small it may be resources. And I do think you, you misunderstand what I mean by resources. It's not just a campaign financing piece. It's also uh, discussions that are not working, uh, people that are not contributing to the process because they think it's ridiculous who, who actually runs all these things. And they can make their jokes outside. Why not having Departai as a joke campaign? Why do they actually need to run for election and try to get elected? Because then the election becomes a joke. Then being elected becomes a joke. And I'm against that. Do they have the right... Sure, they have. We have a free society. We are a free society. Doesn't change the fact that I'm against it. All right. Uh, what I forgot to mention was that uh, 
What do you do about voters who are disappointed by the existing parties? Well, basically, you have two choices. Either you go to with the clowns or you run yourself for election, which most people will not take the trouble to do because of the logistics. Or, or, yeah, so that is actually a very... That's a very good argument, actually. That's maybe the one argument where I I would say it is... Let's say let's say um, there there have been plenty of people in Germany, for instance, that said they voted for the alternative for Germany, the AfD, our right wing party, where some say it's very close to basically a Nazi like movement, um, and you can have arguments over the fa the question is it really that extreme? But uh, there are people that basically say, oh, we hate them, we hate their policies, we elected them to protest against the standing government, and it's similar has been theorized about Trump that people and I remember when he was elected into into office, there were people saying that the the forgotten electorate basically wanted to see the system burn. And maybe that's the motivation to elect certain parties. And if that is the motivation, yeah, then maybe electing the Joker instead of the right-wing party is something I would find better. Let's put it that way, uh, because they, you have you have actually several options. You can you can refuse to vote. You can vote for an extremist party, and for some weird reason, people seem to pick the right-wing extremists instead of the left-wing extremists, which is beyond me why that is the case. You could also protest with the left-wing party, right? Um, but uh, anyway, um, or you could uh, give your vote a joker, which basically means you take it out of the system. Or, or and this is what I forgot also, the second thing, I don't know, like I, I missed some of the obvious things I had here. The other option um, is also to give a blank ballot. The thing is, in most democracies, you don't count the blank yeah. ballot as... You invalidate the ballot, basically, in protest. You, yeah. you don't say that. But the thing is, it's not counted. Like, yeah. It's not considered like as a like as, as a would-be party. You know, like saying, oh, 30% of the vote went to blank votes. No, it's just disregarded. Mm -hmm. right? It's like you count them, but it's, you, don't, you don't add a percentage of saying people voted for nothing because they're just not represented. Yeah. So, so the problem is, I think, is because also these blank ballots are, are not considered then what, what other options do you have? The counter-argument to that, though, is that uh, usually you don't know what people are protesting or if they are protesting. So if you if you take uh, take uh, Lord Buckethead, for instance, or um, not Lord Buckethead, let's say uh, Vermin Supreme in the presidential election, if he gets votes, you don't know, are people electing him because they think it's funny to have somebody demanding a pony-driven economy or are they voting for him because they protest the current government or are they voting for him because they thought it's a legitimate party or well, you have no idea so that kind of renders the protest mute but the counter the counter argument to the counter argument is to say that even with traditional parties it's very rare that you feel represented by everything on the program so you don't know exactly what people are voting for in the end because you're just voting for an entire program And maybe you're against the death, the death penalty, you're against yeah. or in favor of abortion, and and then and then the whoever gets elected thinks they have the legitimacy, and actually they do not. In fact, in most democracies, even aside that argument that which I just made, if you look at how many people they actually represent, when you take into account people who don't show up, and and people getting power because of uh, uh, the the way the legal system is constructed, i.e., if you if you're the first party, even if you have only 20% of the vote, you get the majority of the seats for instance. And imagine if only 50% of the people showed up at elections in the configuration I just mentioned, that means you only have 10% representation of the entire population. And this, this so even beyond the, the, the program, it's crazy to think that our democracies are built in a very biased way. I mean, we haven't found anything better so far, but I, I think at some point we're probably going to evolve, especially with the advancement of technology and the way that everyone has a smartphone. And if we can make things secure, that we're probably going to vote for one piece of the program as the i said the, the core the core point is would i prefer that yeah maybe um that people vote joker instead of right-wing extremists um i do believe that that uh, that argument that uh, if they vote a protest party you see that in the results is a bit mute because we don't know if people vote out of protest and the other thing is you very rarely learn the, the result because it's like you have all those small parties that are seriously running for election and then usually what happens is uh, after an election you get this analysis with the big parties and then other and 
your joker is somewhere in the other bucket. You never learn it. So it's not having that signal that you want. If you, if you would run with a party that basically says you're against everything vote for me then it would be maybe a more interesting setup but they also want to be funny and everything so it's a bit bit of a challenge i would say if you vote for me you get an ipad pro paid for by sebastian let's see what people prefer <laughs> and then we'll have another debate all right thank you very much thank and you stay tuned for our next debate bye bye bye